Hello grade 10s. Today we will use trigonometric ratios to find the length of sides and the size of angles in two dimensional sketches. A dimension is the size of the length, width or height. In this video we will come across two phrases, an angle of elevation and an angle of depression. We are now going to join Reynos, who will explain to us what an angle of elevation is. I bet all of you can't wait for weekends. Weekends are usually a happy time where we get to spend time with our family and our friends. You might spend it playing soccer. If you were feeling energetic, you could go for a hike in the mountains. Or you could go to a movie. All these fun activities could be looked at in a mathematical way. Let's look at what I mean. In all these activities, from where we are, we would have to look up to the top of the object that we are trying to see. We call this imaginary line from our eyes to the object, the diagonal line, the line of sight. We look up to see the top of the goalpost. We look up to see the mountain and the movie screen. All these activities would make you feel elated or put you in a very cheerful mood. Elevate means move to a higher place. So we call angles that move upwards towards a higher place angles of elevation. Look at the angle created between the imaginary horizontal line and the line of sight. We call this angle the angle of elevation because the angle goes up from the horizontal or flat line. So, this means that an angle of elevation is the angle at which we look up. Let's join Reynos again as he describes an angle of depression. Many, many years ago, there lived a girl whose boyfriend dreamed of sailing on the ocean from Cape Town to South America by boat. When he left, they were both very sad as they realized that they would not see one another for a very long time. Time. Every day, this poor, sad girl would go and sit by the edge of the ocean and look down towards the sea, hoping to see the boat with her boyfriend. But all she saw was wave after wave of water. No boat and no boyfriend. Years passed, and the place at the edge of the coast where the girl sat each day became known as Depression Point. The girl stood at the edge of a mountain overlooking the ocean. Her eyes looked down towards the ocean, searching for her boyfriend's boat in the distance. The angle created from an imaginary horizontal line to her line of sight is called an angle of depression. Angles of depression are measured from the horizontal downwards. The girl pining for her boyfriend was depressed and gloomy. She felt down just as an angle of depression moves down from the horizontal. The angle of depression from A, where the girl is standing, to B, the point at which she's looking at the water, angle HAB starts at the horizontal line HA and moves down to line AB. Angles of depression and elevation are used in word problems in trigonometry. Let's join Reynos as he does an example. Pythagoras has been trapped by a new enemy, the tangent. After a long 
long struggle on the roof of a very tall building, Pythagoras manages to escape. He jumps and lands on the roof of an adjoining building, but the tangent is close behind him. Pythagoras shoots out a magic line to the opposite building to stop the tangent from leaping across. The tangent is caught by surprise and falls and lands at the foot of the building. But how far did he fall? Will he be able to climb back? Wait for the next exciting episode of Pythagoras Man. I don't know about you, but I don't think I can wait to find out how high the fall was or whether the tangent would be able to climb back up. I think we should work this out right now. But to do this, I think we need to recreate the scene. Let me have a look and see what's like around here, okay? Uh, <laughs> here's a box, let me see. Oh, Pythagoras man. Here's the tangent. Here's some string, more string, some tape, a ruler, and um, yeah, I think I'll use this as one of the buildings. Now I need a taller building. Let's see this box here. There we go, I can use that as a taller building. Right, I think we're ready to set the scene. Okay, so we'll have this as the one building, and we'll have this as the other building. And why don't we put Pythagoras Man and Mr. Tangent up there? Okay, so let's see what happens. Mr. Tangent is chasing Pythagoras Man, and they are both on top of this building. Pythagoras Man leaps across to this building. But Mr. Tangent is right behind him and he's going to continue chasing him. So Pythagoras Man shoots, yes, that's it, let's use that string. Pythagoras Man shoots this magic line from where he is on that building straight up at Mr. Tangent. Let me tape that there. Mr. Tangent, seeing this line, gets confused, and he falls, whoa, down to the bottom there. Now, we have to calculate how far this fall was. I think we're going to need some more information if we're going to solve this problem. For instance, we don't know what the angle of elevation is of the magic line from Pythagoras Man to the opposite building. We also don't know how far apart the buildings are. But don't worry though, ha, I have found Pythagoras Man's secret book of facts. While I go and check the information we're looking for, why don't you draw a diagram of exactly what happened for yourself? See you now. First, did you make a diagram? It's always a good idea to label a diagram. So, let's call the end of the magic line A. Tangent's position let's call B. And let's call Pythagoras' position C. Now we can fill in information from Pythagoras' book of facts. We have an imaginary horizontal line from point C to the building. Let us call this point E. From C, the angle of elevation to point A is 25,1 degrees. The letter that follows the word from tells you where the horizontal line for the angle of elevation is. We are also told that the angle of depression of point B from C is 52,4 degrees. Again, we look for the letter that follows the word from, from C. 
That means the horizontal line at point C to the building, which we called point E, is the horizontal line we use. The angle moves down to point B. We need to calculate the distance that the tangent fell. But we cannot use triangle ACB because it is not a right-angled triangle. In trigonometry, we often aren't given a right-angled triangle, but we can make right-angled triangles by dividing our large triangle into two smaller right-angled triangles. Now we have two right-angled triangles, triangle AEC and triangle BEC. We can find the length of AE and we can find the length of EB using trigonometry. And if we added these two lengths together, we get the full length AB, the distance the tangent fell. Now we are ready to do some trigonometry. Are you ready? Let's go. In triangle AEC, we know that angle C is 25,1 degrees. But we are still missing some information. We need to get the length of a side. So coming back to Pythagorean's book of facts, ah, the distance between the two buildings is 50 meters. So let's fill that in here. So this distance is 50 meters. And I think I'll call this point D. So I know that DB is equal to 50 meters. And because I know that DB is equal to 50 meters, I can see that CE will also be equal to 50 meters. Now, we have the angle. We want to find the side opposite the angle. And now we know the length of the side adjacent to the angle. So, using the tan ratio, we get tan 25,1 degrees is equal to AE, the opposite side, divided by the adjacent side, which is CE, and we know that CE is 50 meters, so in place of CE, I can write 50 meters, but we want AE alone, so let's multiply both sides by 50. So, 50 meters times tan, 25,1 degrees, will be equal to side AE. <laughs> That's quite a story. Reynolds has only started working out the first part of the problem, the length of AE. Let's do this on a calculator. We press 50 times tan 25, 1, followed by the equal key. The answer to AE is 23,4 meters. Let's go back to Reynolds now. length to that length to get the full distance of the tangent's fall. There he lies. Okay, so we have now our angle of depression 52,4 degrees from the horizontal line, the angle of depression down to B. So opposite this angle is side EB, so that is the opposite side. And once again, adjacent or next to our angle 52,4, there's the A adjacent, is the adjacent side CE. Right, using the tan ratio again, this time round we have tan, and our angle has a name, BCE is equal to the opposite side, which is side EB, divided by the adjacent side, which is CE. Now we can fill in our values. We know that angle BCE is 52,4 degrees. 
we are looking for the opposite side EB. We know the length of the adjacent side CE is 50 meters. Now we want EB alone. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 50. So then I get 50 times tan 52,4 degrees is equal to EB. Let's do this on a calculator. We press 50 times tan, 52,4, followed by the equal key. The length of EB is 64,9 meters. Let's go back to Reynos as he finishes the problem. Now we have the length of AE and EB. We can add them together to find the total height that tangent fell. The length of AE is 23,4 meters. We also know the length of EB to be 64,9 meters. And we are going to add those two lengths together and get a total of 88,3 meters. The tangent fell a very far distance, 88,3 meters. I doubt he'll be able to climb back up the building. The problem involved both angles of depression and elevation. It's important to remember that when we have a problem like this, to always draw the triangles. That way, they are easier to work with. Look at the task video on this work for more practice on trigonometry. Also take a look at our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, great tens. Goodbye.